Director Luke Spachik is head of credit portfolio management for PIMCO Europe, and he joins us now. Luke, thank you so much for joining us on today's show. In terms of what we heard from Merkel or Sarkozy, I mean, have any of the proposals given you any hope that actually they're on top of the crisis? Well, not really. Let's put it this way. If you were going to the cinema and you were expecting to watch a thriller, I think you probably ended up with a bit of a romantic comedy, to be fair. Uh, I think it was very underwhelming uh, because the two things that we really wanted to hear about were, number one, expansion of the EFSF, and number two, anything about Eurobonds. We kind of hit a hint about the Eurobonds that, you know, they're obviously not off the table, but not exactly on the table either. Yeah, I really like the analogy, Luke. In terms of, you know, Eurobonds, is it the only way to actually get out of this? And can we expect something from them at the next press conference? I mean, did you get any kind of idea that they're at least they're working together towards this, but it was just too early to announce. Well, I, I've, I picked up a couple of things. Number one, uh, Sarkozy used the phrase that, you know, Eurobonds are imaginable, and uh, Merkel described them as the last resort. Now, at the end of the day, back to the movie analogy, you know, markets don't like waiting to watch the entire film. They want to see the ending first and then watch the film all over again. And I think we need to fast forward to, to that resolution yeah, sooner look, rather than later. Th this is Europe. You know, we've been waiting for a fast forwarding of the events for the last two years and we're not going to get it. Are we going to have the situation get much worse before the leaders get into action? Right. Well, the, over the last couple of weeks, you, weeks, you've seen what the price action has done and you've seen a, uh, a very strong move by the ECB on the first couple of days by going out and buying peripheral bonds of Spain and Italy. But this, this whole meeting did not address the problem, the periphery how they're going to fund themselves, how they get brought under the European wing you know, in a much more yeah. formal way. And how long can the ECB actually hold down yields on Italian and Spanish bonds? So today they're down a touch. Right. Well, you know, they've got a pretty big balance sheet and, you know, if they were to go towards the unsterilized model, you know, they could bring down spreads quite a lot. And you can imagine if they went in and bought 100 billion a day, it have a much, much bigger impact. I think that the, uh, they're there at the moment as a kind of uh, plaster or a band-aid at the moment to, to tide things over. But, you know, if the, if the European policymakers don't find a way of moving towards fiscal integration, then the ECB may have to do actually a lot more. And so at the moment, would you completely stay away from a lot of these peripheral bonds? Because we had two bond auctions yesterday that went down pretty well, and at the same time, yields are down a touch. No, it's not, it's not a question of, of ruling out uh, places like Spain and Italy. I think that over the long haul, uh, places like Spain and Italy have definitely got uh, a lot to be said for them as, as a deleveraging story over the next uh, 10 years. But there's a lot of work to be done. So it's not a question of avoiding those markets completely. I think I have some sympathy for, for buying assets in those economies. But I do think that um, really the, the problem um, is, is trying to figure out the relative value between uh, the core and, and the periphery. And I think that's where we're beginning to figure out whether, you know, France and Germany only trade at appropriate levels if you start moving towards more integration. And so what would you be buying at the moment? Well, we made the case before that a lot of um, investment grade credit opportunities around the world that have moved into quite reasonable territory. Um, some of the high yield bonds um, that looked very, very rich uh, six to eight weeks ago um, have moved out to, to levels that are quite attractive too. Again, Right now, it's not really a, a beta play. It's more of a, an alpha play. It's a pure stock selection game. You know, go for the things that you really know well and the ones that have got a strong margin of safety over the next uh, three years. Look, we also had some really disappointing GDP figures from Germany yesterday. Overall, have the chances of recession in Europe increased? Absolutely. Um, I think this all kicked off really with, with the scare on, on the U.S. revision of the GDP data uh, a while back. Um, the, the European numbers are beginning to, to roll over pretty quickly. And obviously, the periphery is in much, much, uh, much bigger danger of, uh, of falling into a recession. But clearly, you know, given the price action we've seen in the markets right now, given the level of uncertainty that, that's, that's, uh, that's really kicked in, you know, it doesn't look too good for the second half of the year. And to be honest with you, with the ECB hiking rates, that sounds like an, an, an out-of-touch moment, really. Yeah, and, and can, the, can France actually hold on to its AAA credit rating? It's on the 24th next week where we'll have the real lowdown of all the austerity measures that the president wants to push through. But then it's right. also election year in 2012. Right. It's, you know, the rating agencies have all maintained uh, their, their AAA ratings and they've, and they've come out and told us why. Uh, again, they can change their mind, but it doesn't look like over the very, very short term they're going to change their minds. Um, I think that the U.S. situation spooked people quite a lot. So, you know, if the U.S. is not AAA, now can France be so? I think um, the, the key question there for everyone is actually whether the S&P uh, can, can change its mind over the, over the short to medium term and push it back to AAA and whether the U.S. has got a, a path back. But clearly, uh, right now, you know, if the European Union, especially Germany and France, move towards a, a, if you like, a joint and several 
you know, common Eurobond. And by the way, joint and several are probably the two hardest words to translate across all European <laughs> languages right now. Um, if they do that, then obviously AAA may not necessarily be AAA in France either. But at the moment, it does yeah. feel like a AAA. Correct? All right, for the moment. Luke, thank you so much. Luke Spadrick there from PIMCO Europe.